Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to make a boat game in Unity in under 15 minutes. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get started. So in making this game, the core concept is to make it a game like Subway Surfers, an endless runner with obstacles. And to make it more interesting, instead of controlling a person like in Subway Surfers, we're going to steer a boat in the water to make it more fun. So that's what our game is going to look like, Subway Surfers with a boat. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open a new project in Unity Hub. Let's make a 3D project and call it Boat Game. But obviously you can call it whatever you want. And so after a few seconds of loading, Unity should be able to pull up your new project. And so now that we made our project, let's head over to our next step. And so I headed over to the Unity Asset Store and found a couple of really good ones for free. So firstly, I'm going to add this one to my assets. It's called Low Polywater by Ebru Dogen. And so once you click the add to my assets button like I did, you should see a pop-up that says open in Unity Editor. Click on that and then it should take you to your Unity project. Now in your Unity project window, you should see a package manager window. So like on my screen, all you simply have to do is go to the bottom right and click the download button. And once that finishes, click the import button. And so when you click the import button, it should bring up another window and just simply import all of the assets like I did. After a couple seconds of loading, all the assets should be in your scene. And so just to see how they look in our project, I'm gonna try them out. And you can do this too by looking at the project library window in your Unity project. So going through the folders, I saw a demo scene that they provided. And once you click on that, they have an island surrounded by their ocean. And so looking at it, it looks really cool. And especially when you click the play button, you can see all the really cool effects that the waves produce. I think we definitely made the right decision with this asset. Alright, and so moving on, we're gonna repeat the process and we're gonna get a boat. So I found this really good one by Polygrunt called Low Poly Boat, and we're gonna do the same thing and add it to our asset. Now we're gonna open it in Unity, and through our package manager, we're gonna download it and import it like we did last time. Alright, and so now that's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the folders to make it a little more easy for us to understand. So since they both start with low poly, it's kind of hard to differentiate, so I'm going to name the boat folder boat and the water folder water. Alright, and so with that, I'm going to open the boat folder and go to the prefab subfolder. Then I'm going to open the boat and look at it. It honestly looks pretty cool. Alright, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene in our project called the game scene in our scenes window. And I'm going to delete the sample scene that Unity gave us. Now in the demo scene that we had open, I'm just going to simply copy the ocean and paste it in the game scene so that we can also use the ocean. And now I'm going to go to the boat folder and get the prefab, the single boat. And I'm just going to put that in our scene. So now this is our scene. This is where we're going to make our game. And so in our scene, we have the boat and the ocean. So if you look at the, um, if you look at it in the game view, it doesn't look as fancy because we didn't set up the camera. So it kind of looks like underneath the boat. But if you look in the scene view, it looks really cool. The waves are working and the boat is floating. And so now our next step is going to be to code the boat so that the player can also control it. But before that, we have a couple of things that we need to fix. So as we saw earlier, the camera was looking underneath the boat. We couldn't see above the boat like a real game. And so what I'm going to do to fix that is that we're going to create a script called follow player and attach it to the camera. Alright, so let's pull that up in Visual Studio. So, um... In our follow player script, what you want to do is in the beginning, call the game object player. That's That will be our boat. And then an update, always update, uh, it'll always update the camera's position to our player's position plus an offset, uh, as you can see on our screen. 
So, um, I'm also gonna edit the main camera's rotation to 18 on the x-axis so it can look down and not straight out. So, um, playing that, testing it out, it works really well. You can see, um, you can see the boat from above like we want it to. So, looking at the boat in the game view, it kind of looks like the boat is floating, but that's not really what's happening. The boat is just staying stationary a little bit above the ocean. And we want to fix that. We want it to actually, like, uh, we want the boat to actually float. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a rigid body to our boat. That What that's going to do is that's going to give it physics like a real boat would have, and it's going to give it gravity. But when we test it out, a problem presents. Basically, the boat just falls through the water like the water isn't even there. So we're going to do the combat that is on the ocean. We're going to add a mesh collider. We're adding a mesh collider because there's a mesh render right here. So the mesh collider is going to work on the mesh render. Basically, basically on the ocean, now with the mesh collider, the boat knows that there's an ocean here. Uh, same thing with the boat. We need to add a collider on that so the ocean knows that the boat is there. And we're going to add a box collider. We're going to adjust it accordingly so it fits the boat. Now, adding the colliders and the rigid body, you can see how the bow is floating up and down with the waves, and it has a super cool effect. And with that done, let's head over to our next step, which is to add kind of borders to the side. As you can see in Subway Surfer, it's a train, it's a railway station, so you can see on the left and right there are walls. But walls don't really fit with the boat, so we're going to add a beach on either side. And I found a really good asset called Low Poly Environment Pack. Um, and we're going to do the exact same thing as we did before and add it to our assets, download it. And so with that in our project, we can see three demo scenes just like we did with the Ocean Asset Pack. There's three, um, demo one, demo two, and demo three. There's one forest, there's one beach, and there's one kind of desert. I really like uh, demo two because I think it fits well with our ocean theme. So that's what we're going to go with. So basically in demo 2, now I'm just going to highlight all the parts of the kind of beach. So there's the environment, the rocks, um, the stones, all of that. And I'm just going to highlight them all, copy it, and paste it in our scene. Alright, and so obviously this beach is kind of small. It doesn't like fit the whole um, island. It's, it's almost smaller than the boat. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to highlight all parts of the beach. The environment, the grasses, the rocks, the plants, the stones, all of it. And I'm going to increase the scale to 5 on each axis so that it becomes bigger. And would you look at that? That looks a lot better. It looks a lot more to scale. I'm going to move it up a little. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty object called uh, chunk 1 that you'll see in a, in a second. And what that uh, chunk 1 will do is kind of it's going to store the whole beach into one uh game object so it's easier to organize so yeah see i'm moving all of them into chunk one and basically uh on the left side at least you can't like the beach doesn't cover the whole side so i'm just gonna duplicate chunk one all the way like maybe five times until it covers the whole ocean All right, and I'm on my last chunk to finish the ocean. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the chunks into one empty game object as well. I'm going to call that the left side beach. And then I'm going to duplicate it to make uh, the right side beach. All right, and so while I'm organizing it into empty game objects, I hope you follow along as well because it makes the coding process a lot easier and a lot more organized.
Alright, and so once I'm done organizing, I'm gonna create a new script called Land Generator. Basically, the plan is to move the blend backwards so the player feels like he's moving forward. So in the beginning, I'm just gonna call the two game objects you saw me organize, Rotation 1, Rotation 2. And in the update, I'm just gonna keep moving Rotation 1, Rotation 2 backwards until they reach the end of the ocean, in which point they're gonna move forwards and then they're gonna come back again. Basically, this is what... Uh, this is a strategy that a lot of games use. The land moves backwards, but the player stays uh, stationary. And that just makes the player feel like he's moving forward. But having the player move forward the whole game is really inefficient. And it's really slow. But um, one really important thing that you just saw me do was turn all terrain static on and off again. This is going to ensure that static remains off. You, you want to make static to be off because static means that the game object can't move. So that's why turning it on and off again makes sure that all the land can move. So one more thing you're going to see me do is you're, I'm going to duplicate the ocean. So this doesn't really serve any like actual functional purpose. It just looks a lot better uh, than before because before the player could see the gray uh, space in the distance. Alright, and so with that done, it looks really good. The land is moving backwards, which makes the player move, feel like the boat is moving forwards. So we're good for our next step. Alright, and so now what you're going to see me do is I'm going to rename the boat to player because obviously it is the player. It makes it a lot easier to look at. I'm going to create a new script called player controller. Now let's create that and add it to the player and open it up in Visual Studio. Alright, and so once that loads, let's start coding. Alright, and so let me walk you through the code. So in the beginning, we're going to call the two variables float speed uh, and float score. So right now our speed is going to be 30, and our score is going to be 0. So in the update, really simple. Basically, if we click the left arrow, and uh, we're within the bounds of the beaches, uh, we're going to move to the left lane. If we click the right arrow, we're going to move to the right lane. That's all it is. And so yeah, once you get this code down, you'll be good for our next step. Alright, and so once this step is done, it kind of looks like most of our game is already done. It looks like the player is moving forward, the player can move left and right. And the player's moving up and down with the waves. Alright, but obviously we're missing a really crucial step. We're missing something that the player needs to get. And we're going to use gold coins just like subway servers with that. So, uh, I found these really good assets called gold coins. And you already know the deal. Where you have to add to the assets, download and import them. So, once you get them in assets, open them up. Um, and add a box slider to them just like I'm doing right here. And I'm making them a little bit higher. Just so that it's easier for the player to get them and we don't need to run into any glitches or anything like that. So I'm going to create a new empty object called Coin Spawner, where it's going to be responsible for spawn spawning all the coins around the map. So I'm going to add the Coin Spawner script to this empty object. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So let me walk you through the code. In the beginning, we call the game object Coin Prefab. We start the coroutine spawn coin coroutine. What the spawn, spawn coin coroutine does is that it chooses a random number between 1 and 2. And that the, that chooses whether it goes in the left, middle, or right lane. Then it actually spawns the coin. And so yeah, once you get that code down, um, make sure you can pause it if you need some more time. But yeah, once you get that down, let's head over to the coin screen. So in the beginning, we're going to call the player controller script, public player controller, player controller. We're going to call the float, uh, which is our score, the amount of coins that we have. And in the start, we already named the player controller, but we didn't define it. So in the start, uh, we're going to tell the code to find the player. And on top of that player object, we're going to look for the player controller script on it. Then in the fixed update, which is the physics update, what we're going to do is um as long as the coin is not past the boat like if it's if it already went past the boat then there's no point it destroys it but if it isn't if it's still coming towards the boat we just make sure that it's coming towards the boat so um and then right after that we're gonna do private void on trigger enter and it's gonna check when um the player collides with the um we're it's gonna check when the player collides with the coin and it's going to add one to the score. It's kind of checking if the coin is touching the player. And then after that, it destroys it. So at this point, we're kind of on our finishing touches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a canvas, a UI canvas. And inside of that, I'm going to put two texts. 
Uh, the first text, I'm going to call it score. And I'm going to uh, type the text in it, score colon. And I'm going to move its uh, rect transform, its anchor, and I'm going to put it in the top left. Then I'm going to reset its position X and Y. And I should kind of move it in the top left. I'm also going to um, make it um, best fit so that it kind of best uh, it fits the um, the square that we provided. I'm going to make its width and height 500 and I'm going to go to the scene and move it so that the player can see it. Now if you go to the game, you can obviously see the score in the top left. So um, now I'm just going to duplicate that and make, make it time. Uh, and then I'm going to put um, the time in the text. Um, obviously, you can change the colors, all of that if you want to. Um, that would make it pop out a lot more. And so with the score and the time now in our scene, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drag the score text into the player controller. And then we're going to handle the time. I didn't really bring that up until now, but it was kind of like an obstacle in our game. Really, there wasn't anything stopping the player from getting a thousand coins, a hundred thousand. The time is kind of stopping it, so it makes uh, the game a little harder. So, um, as you can see my time script, I'm going to attach that onto my time text. And this, uh, this script kind of just counts down from 60 all the way to zero. Uh, and then when that happens, it pauses the game. And then it uh, puts in a console, um, game over. Alright, and so once your time is working, everything should be good to go. Um, you should have your player working, your coins working, your time working, all parts of the game. Uh, I always encourage people like go above and beyond to add their own aspects to the game. So yeah, I hope you like this tutorial. It worked for me and I hope it works for you. Um, it was a lot of fun to make, although it took a lot of time. So I would really appreciate it if you dropped a comment and liked it. Anyways, thanks for watching.